So one of the things that I've shown so far has been creating your little MicroPython game on one of these Pimeroni peripherals. We've got a game, we've done several different types of game, but all of them have had one flaw. Well, they've all had many flaws, but they've all had the flaw that they have to be wired into the computer. Load the game up on the computer, even if the game is saved on the Pi. Press play to get the game to run. That's all very well, but here we have a computer that's perfectly capable of playing games. So what's the point in, apart from learning, doing it on one of these boards? So what you want to do is to make this game play standalone, really. How do you do that? Several people have asked. It's really, really simple. We've got the bird game here. Um, this is the game that's running. When I press run, it should restart. So that's running from the computer there. But if we do file save as, reply Pico, and we save it as, or change the file name away from the original one and save it as main.py, this still runs as previously. But if we stop that running and we unplug that and plug it into just, just a battery uh, supply here, plug it into here, then because it's called main.py, the Python, MicroPython on this looks for something called main.py before it starts the game. So uh, quite quite simple um, to do that. But several people have asked, and so I think it might have deserved a video, if 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 somewhat of a short video, to uh, just explain that. I wonder. Let's try and take this a little bit further though, because. We've used some of these at the top. We've used these imports at the top. Maybe we don't always want to save a game as main.py. We want to have other games that are on here. And I was thinking about how could we use this as a sort of menu system, maybe, to start a set of different games. So I thought I'd explore a little bit in this video how we might try that. It might not work perfectly. As usual with me, there will be better ways of doing this, but this is me just tacking things as normal. Well, let's plug it back in <laughs> to the computer, otherwise this is never going to work. Back into the computer. Notice it played straight away because this is still running the code off that until we hit stop. And if we now run it again, it now starts it. So now this is running under computer control. I think I stored this main explorer demo all right so let's let's pull that in let me just run that check it still works oh whether this has changed recently since i put the new firmware in maybe i need to check that these demos are right but uh, hopefully this should be fine for this one. Oh no it's all right in the newest one they've removed um the backlight in a uh, version 7 i think it is They've moved this backlight for the Pico Explorer because the Pico Explorer apparently doesn't have a backlight. So let me just um, hash that out. All right, so that's got that's got that main um, program back in again. Bit bit hard to see on this. This is like a purpley colour for me. It's looking blue on the screen, but uh, hopefully we can still make that out. So from this, I just I just really wanted to get the plugger jumper bit in. So let's get rid of all of these bits. I'm just going to do file save as PyPico and I'll call it menu. Right, so I don't really want this to do much at all, but uh, let's just... All right, so that's fine. Let's make the um, background black. Has that come through clear? That's clear enough. Maybe let's just, as usual, let's just take that down a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit clearer. Well, we don't need I, but I'm going to say, what, what can we use as the thing? While clicked. While clicked equals false. And unclicked equals false. And I'm just going to say this is unclicked. So this should work normally, nothing changes because there's nothing in here to, to change the click. So what I want to do is I want this uh, this loop to stop when you push a button. So outside of the loop, I would like to put what I want it to do when the loop's finished. 
say we clear the screen and we have to send the update to the screen as well if we run this as it stands again nothing should particularly happen oh it does while unclicked oh we've got to say unclicked equals true haven't we try that again and so print the explorer okay oh and now it's doing it every time which is also not very good so let's just stop that and we've got button A, button B, button C. Here, let's say, doesn't matter where we say, after we've printed it, if Explorer is pressed button, then I wanted to use button B. I think that was correct. If it is pressed, then unclicked equals false. So, Oh, I don't know, 24 Explorer, or was it? Oh, I'm missing something here, aren't I? Explorer, button B, let's try that. Okay, so that's working again, that's looping. And when I press button B, screen goes blank and the output stops. All right, so there's there's something. So let's let's just change this. Let's say, press B to flap the bird so let's run this again the menu oh and before i do that i don't need that that there anymore i run it again so it will do nothing when we press b the screen resets if i now save that file save as pypico and save it as main.py yeah hopefully this will now display something different on the screen so it will display that press a to flap the bird but of course when we press it the program stops nothing else will happen we hit the reset or whichever the right reset is it starts again press it there hit the reset so because that gets to the end of the program that that once it gets to that explorer update that's the end of the program so really we want to now load the bird program in when we press that b so let's put it back into programming mode what i'm going to try i don't know whether this works normally we put the import things at the top at the start but what i'm going to do is say once we've got to the end of that i'm going to import bird now i've got no idea whether this will work and this is probably awful bad practice to put this here but let's see whether it works i'm just hacking and seeing what happens run that again so it's got to press A, and if I press A, <laughs> bad things happen. All right, memory allocation fails. All right, so maybe the import has to be at the start. So I'm going to take uh, that and put it up here again. Now, if I'm importing that, do I need the other? Do I need the time? Do I need the random? I don't know. It will be done on the other. Who Who knows? Let's see what happens. Let's run it there. All right, so I'm getting, I think I'm getting memory allocation failed there. Oh, now it appears to have completely stopped. So let's do a reset again and see if I can get back to the, doesn't want to get back to the command again. Oh, it's running flappy birds. Right, okay. So, oh, it's interesting it ran flappy birds there, but I've lost more of the program now, haven't I? So, uh -huh. right so oh, i see what's happening so as we run this now it doesn't actually run this loop down here it goes as soon as we import bird it starts bird so what we've got to do then is modify this program so that it only runs when we call it and i think that's probably enough for this video today which was only supposed to be short so in our next video I'm going to look at what we have to do to one of our programs to convert it into its own module, which we, we can then call as an import to another program.